Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about the things that make us stuck as guitar players. I know this is something that a lot of you struggle with and it really comes down to two things. There's emotional and physical. So you can be stuck for emotional reasons and then stuck for physical reasons. And I'm just going to go through both of those things. I'm going to start with emotional. Now this might seem like, eh, not interested in that. But believe me, a lot of stuff comes from this. So um, let's look at an example. So let's say you've been hammering away exercises non-stop. You've been working on technical things and you've reached a plateau you know you're not making any progress and a lot of the time it's because we don't have the right goals now one thing that is so common is that people will come to me and say I just want to be able to shred I just want to be able to play fast I want to be able to do everything and when I hear that it's like an alarm bell going off because I know that that is it's one of those situations where the goal is so vague it's so nebulous and, and undefined that it's almost definitely just going to just come crashing down. It's not going to go anywhere. It's, it's, you know, it's like an athlete training for something and they don't even know what they're training for. You know, it's like people who just want to get fitter, but they don't actually have a discipline which they're directing it towards, like bodybuilding or running or sports or something. So it's a bit like that. It's, it's just wanting, wanting to be better. And then the question you want to ask is why in this case? Because people have a defined goal, like let's say you've joined a band and you need to learn a particular song or a group of songs, or let's say there's a solo you really want to learn because you've always wanted to be able to learn it, it's your favourite solo, um, or there's some reason why you have to be able to do a certain thing. Now when you have a goal like that, there's a real tangible reason why you're practising. So every time you go to the guitar you have a reason why. It's not just this vague notion of, oh, I want to get better. Okay. And people who have these goals tend to get the results more than people who have this vague notion of just wanting to be better for no other reason than just wanting to be better, you know? Uh, just consulting my notes here. It's like, uh, it's really important stuff. It's like the emerald tablet of notes here. It's not really, it's just loads of drawings and stuff. When it comes to emotional burnout, you just need to evaluate your goals and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it coming from you or is it a case of what happens a lot? these days is people want to be able to do all the shreddy stuff because they see other people doing it and so they feel like well I want to be able to do it because somebody else can do it rather than it being a case of I really want to be able to do that because I love the way it sounds I really know that I want to be able to do all that fast alternate picking that sweet picking those tapping hybrid picking all that sort of flashy stuff um, but a lot of the time it's just because they see other people doing it and they feel like they should be able to do it Whenever you're hearing the word should a lot and you feel yourself thinking, I should be able to do this, I should be able to do that, that word should is usually a clue that it's not really coming from you, it's coming from external um, factors. You know, it's, it's more about what you think you should be able to do according to other people rather than it being one of your desires. So really when it comes to emotional burnout, it really is evaluate your goals, ask yourself why, why do I want this? Is it because I generally genuinely want to do this or is it because I think I should. Now we're getting on to physical things that cause us to be stuck. So uh, several different things here obviously but the first thing I want to talk about is the way you grip the pick. Obviously if you don't use a pick at all you don't really need to consider this too much. But gripping the pick, a lot of people use way too much force or the way they're holding it is just not really good for them. I hesitate to use words like right and wrong um, because we kind of know when it comes to music there's no rules you know music isn't a rule based phenomenon is it, is it really it's, it's about expression there's no rules but there are things which work for the majority of people and things which don't work for the majority of people which a minority of people are able to make work despite it being unusual okay so yes there are no rules here but generally gripping the pick way too hard harder than you need to is going to cause excess tension. You can maybe get away with it at lower speeds, but as soon as you're going to try and do anything that's technical, flashy, requires speed and dexterity, you're going to sort of come unstuck and you can notice the weaknesses of this approach. So evaluate that. Some people do get away with gripping it like that with kind of like a stiff thumb and it really works. Some people need to sort of relax up on the thumb a little bit. There's loads of different ways of holding the pick. Like I said, I won't use the word right and wrong. There's no such thing, but Evaluate that. That's like the starting block, you know, how you hold the pick. A lot of people ask, how much tension do I need to hold the pick? How hard should I hold it? Really, I would say as hard as you need to hold it to stop yourself dropping it, you know. Try and get away with the least amount possible. But generally, it's not, you know, it's not an exact thing. It's just avoid too much. You know, the clue is always in the word too 
much, T double O two. Then of course, moving on, it could be the picking technique itself. Maybe you haven't found the right kind of mechanic, you know, whether it's wrist or a combination of wrist and a little bit of that circular motion or more of a forearm rotation, even elbow, whatever. Loads of different things work for different people. So, you know, I mean, I've got a load of videos about picking techniques. I think um, the playlist will be below in the video description. There's loads of that stuff. I mean, that's a whole subject in itself, but yes, not finding the right picking mechanic that actually works for you as well is going to be a major thing. So unless you've got that sort of in place working for you, again, that's going to be another physical reason why you're going to get stuck despite the amount of time you're putting in practicing exercises and whatnot. Hand synchronization. Okay, this is the biggie. This is nearly always a factor. Now, the thing with hand sync is if you're having problems in this area, you're doing one of two things. You're either going too fast or you're trying to do too much at one time or both. Okay, usually it's both. Now, in regards to doing too much, you can take anything, any piece of music in the world, despite its complexity, and make it simple or make it easier by the way you approach it. So you could take Mozart, Beethoven, whatever, and make it easy by the way you break the piece down. So let's say you've got a passage which has got 36 notes, right? Break it down into 12 notes. It's about making stuff manageable. And then slowing it down. See, the reason people talk about slowing stuff down, they usually think it's to do just with physicality, with uh, dexterity, with stamina, things like that. And yes, while it is that, the biggest advantage for slowing stuff down is actually your brain. It's for keeping, um, keeping yourself from getting overwhelmed and it's allowing your brain to keep up with what you're doing. You know, when you try and do too much, like if you try and do a picking lick from like the low E string to the high E string, you're having to think about so many different things. That's why loads of picking exercises are broken up into like just two strings. You know, so you can master a mechanic without having to think about, ah, oh, crossing all those strings and blah, blah, blah. So slowing it down so you can get it right. As I always say to people, give yourself time to get it right. That means give yourself time to think. You know, it's about the intent. So um, if you think about a brain, it's like the computer, isn't it? A body is like the machine, you know? Uh, people concentrate only on the machine instead of thinking about the intent that you put into the computer. So the computer is telling yourself what to do. So if you give yourself enough time to get it right, you're not stumbling over, forgetting, you haven't memorized stuff, you're not only are you physically not ready, but mentally you're not even giving yourself time to get it right. So that's why you slow stuff down. So isolate the problem area, reduce the number of notes, and then give yourself time to get it right. And that's, you know, how you do it. You know, I've even got a course on hand sync. Just go and grab it. I mean, that's what that shit's there for. It's just right there. Go and get it right now. Um, hand synchronization will mess up everything if you haven't got that happening. So even if you've got a good picking technique and your fingers are strong, if that sync isn't happening, you know, you're not going to be able to do picking runs, all that sort of stuff. And your fretting hand fingers then is another uh, thing which will keep you stuck. If they're weak, you're going to have trouble. Well, it goes back to hand synchronization again. If you've got weak fingers, forget trying to get the synchronization happening. Because despite however good the picking hand is, if your fingers are weak, these are not going to, you cannot get your fingers in time when the, the strength isn't there. A weak finger always wants to pull off the fret. It wants to move away from tension as soon as it can because it hasn't got the strength to hold its position where it is. That's why people with weak fingers can't do bending very well, can't do vibrato very well, because the fingers will always crumble under tension. Okay? People always talk about relaxation and smoothness and hardly using any tension. Whilst that is true, um, that really kind of comes into play when you've got a foundation of strength there. Because if you're not building the strength in those fingers, well, you haven't got the scope to get to that point where you're really smooth and you're thinking about how much tension you're using. Obviously, you don't want to approach it like, you know, some gorilla on steroids and, and, and really put too much effort in. But really, at this stage, if your fingers haven't got that strength, forget about hand sync, forget about picking runs and syncing up together because it isn't going to happen, all right? So you really need to get that sorted out and, uh, you know, working on your legato is a really good way of doing that. And as I said, string bending it will really test the strength in your fingers. But yeah, getting some legato happening, first of all, is the key with that. And last but not least, probably one of the most obvious reasons why you get stuck is just through doing too much, tiring out, burnout, whatever you want to call it. So if you've got to that stage, you've just been working too hard on probably one particular aspect of technique. Now, if you get to that point, the only answer to that is to lay off that technique. Uh, you can obviously have time off the guitar, or if that's not an option for you, if you don't like the idea of that, you can still play guitar, but just lay off that technique for a little while and concentrate on other stuff. 
it's always better to do too little than too much because if you do too much you've already gone beyond uh, the red line and now you've got to wait to heal up and you can't do anything now whereas if you do too little you're in a position where you can always add a little bit more so that's the place you always want to be in it's better to do too little than too much anyway um, that's enough to be getting on with really those are the main reasons those are the main reasons for um, getting stuck the way you break things down and approach certain passages will enable you to get past these sticking blocks and for developing you know like hand sync like I said I've got a course for that I've got a legato course for you to sort your fingers out picking all that stuff I've made this stuff exactly for people to go and grab it get what they need take it and and get past these stumbling blocks you know not knowing how to make certain techniques work is a big stumbling block as well so if you're stuck and you also don't know how to implement a technique like alternate picking or what to do with your fingers or what to do with bending blah 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 you know that's why I make those courses so you can just go and grab them and take what you need and, and get past these annoying hurdles you get stuck on anyway so that's getting stuck that's pretty much all there is to it you know anything else you can come up with on your own is going to be related to these things I've already spoken about and it all starts with the emotional thing so sort out the intent first sort out your psychological approach to these things then the physical stuff will follow and before I go if there's anything else you're struggling with just let me know in the comments below okay so that's it guys take care and I'll see you next time